Hello all, welcome to the lecture on Pandas data frames. In this lecture, we are going to see about the Pandas library. Specifically, we are going to look at the following topics. First, we will get introduced to the Pandas library. After that, we are going to see how to import the data into Spider. We will be looking at how to create a copy of original data. We will also be looking at how to get the attributes of data. Followed by that, we will see or how to do indexing and selecting data. To introduce you to the Pandas library, it provides high performance, easy to use data structures and analysis tools for the Python programming language. It is an open source Python library which provides high performance data manipulation and analysis tool using its powerful data structures. And it is also considered one of the powerful data structures when compared with other data structures because of its performance and data manipulation techniques that are available in Pandas. And the name Pandas is derived from the word panel data, which is an econometrics term for multidimensional data. And here is the description of about the data frame. Data frame consists of two dimension. The first dimension is the row and the second dimension is the column. That is what we mean by two dimensional and size mutable. And whenever we say data frame, data frame is a collection of data in a tabular fashion. And the data will be arranged in rows and columns where we say each row represent a sample or a record and each column represent a variable. The variable in the sense the properties that are associated with each sample. The second point is that potentially heterogeneous tabular data structure with labeled axis. Heterogeneous tabular data structure in the sense whenever we read a data into spider it becomes a data frame and each and every variable gets a data type associated with that whenever you read it. We do not need to explicitly specify the data type to each and every variables and that is basically based on the data or the type of data that is contained in each variable or a column. And we mean labeled axis, each and every row and columns will be labeled, row labeling the index for each rows which is starting from 0 to n minus 1 and the labels for column in the sense the names for each variables, those are called labeled axis. So, whenever we say labeled axis, the row labels are nothing but the row index and the column labels are nothing but the column names and this is about the basic description of the data frame. So, next we will see how to import the data into spider. In order to import data into spider, we need to import necessary libraries. One of it is called OS. Whenever you import any library, we use the command import and OS is the library that is used to change the working directory. Once you open your spider, the default working directory will be wherever you have installed your python and we import OS to basically change the working directory so that you will be able to access the data from your directory. Next we are going to import the pandas library using the command import pandas as pd. pd is just an ally to pandas so whenever I am accessing or getting any functions from pandas library, I will be using it as pd and we imported pandas to work with data frames. We are also importing the numpy library as np to perform any numerical operations. Now we have imported the library called os and chdir is the function which is used to set a path from which you can access the file from. And inside the function, I have just specified my path wherever the data that I am going to import into spider is lying. My data is in the D drive under the folder pandas. So, now this is how we change or set the working directory. Once we set the working directory, we are set to import any data into spider. So, now we will see how to import the data into spider. So, to import the data into spider, we use the command read underscore csv since we are going to import a csv file and the read underscore csv is from the library pandas. So, I have used pd dot read underscore csv and inside the function you just need to give the file name within single or double quote and along with the extension dot csv. And I am saving it to an object called cars underscore data. So, once I read it and save it to an object my cars underscore data becomes the data frame. And once you read it, you will get the details in the environment tab. 
where you will see the object name, the type of the object and number of elements under that object. And once you double click on that object or the data frame, you will get a window where you will be able to see all the data that is available from your Toyota file. This is just a snippet of three rows with all the columns and I have multiple variables here first being the index whenever you read any data frame into spider the first column will be index it is just the row labels for all the rows. The next is the unnamed colon zero column according to our data we already have a column which serves the purpose for row labels. So this is just an unwanted column and next being the price variable which describes the price of the cars because this data is about the details of the cars and the properties that are associated with each cars. So, the each rows represents the car details, the car details being price, age, kilometer, fuel type, horsepower and so on. First let us look at what each variable means, price being the price of the car, all the details are about the pre-owned cars, next being the age of the car and the age is being represented in terms of months and the kilometer how many kilometer that the car has traveled the fuel type that the car possess one of the type is diesel next being the horsepower and we have another variable called met color that basically represents whether the car has a metallic color or not zero means the car does not have a metallic color and one means the car does have a metallic color and next being automatic what is the type of gearbox that the car possess if it is automatic it will be represented as 1 and if it is manual it will be represented as 0. Next is being the CC of the car and the doors represents how many number of doors that the car has and the last being the weight of the car in kgs. So, this is just uh, the description of all the variables in the Toyota CSV and we have also found out that there are two columns which serves the purpose for row labels instead of having two columns we can remove either one of it index is the default one so we can remove unnamed colon zero column so how to get rid of this whenever you read any csv file by passing index underscore column is equal to zero the first column becomes the index column so now let us see how to do that so whenever we read the data using the read underscore csv we can just add another argument called index underscore column is equal to 0 and the value 0 represents which column you should treat it as a index. I need the first column should be treated as the index. So, basically I have renamed unnamed colon 0 to index. So, if you use 1 here then price will be treated as row index. You will get the column name as index but all the values will be the price column values. So, but I do not want that since I already have a column which is in the name of unnamed I am using that column as my index column. So, whenever I use index underscore column is equal to 0 the first column will be treated as index column. So, now we know how to import the data into spider let us see how to create the copy of original data because there might be cases where we need to work with the copy of the data without doing any modifications to the original data. So, let us see in detail about how we can create a copy of original data. So, in python there are two ways to create copies one is shallow copy and another one is deep copy first let us look at the shallow copy the function row represents how to use the function and the description represents what does that function means. So, in shallow copy you can use the dot copy function that can be accessed whenever you have a data frame since I have cars underscore data as a data frame I can use dot copy if you want to do a shallow copy you can use deep is equal to false by default the value will be true. So, there are two ways to do a shallow copy one is by using the dot copy function another one is by just assigning the same data frame into a new object I have assigned cars underscore data as samp using the assignment operator. So, this also means you are doing a shallow copy. So, what shallow copy means in the sense 
basically if you are doing a shallow copy it only creates a new variable that shares the reference of the original object it does not create a new object at all also any changes made to a copy of object will be reflected in the original object as well so whenever you want to work with a mutable object then you can do a shallow copy where all the changes that you are making into samp will be reflected in your cars underscore data now let us see about the deep copy to do a deep copy we use the same command dot copy but we set the deep as true and by default the deep value will be true so whenever you use dot copy you are doing a deep copy as you see i am doing a deep copy and by creating a new object called cars underscore data one where cars underscore data one is the copy of the original data cars underscore data and what deep copy represents means in case of a deep copy, a copy of object is copied in another object. Like the copy of cars underscore is being copied in another object called cars underscore data with no reference to the original. And whatever changes you are making it to the copy of object that will not be reflected in the original object at all. Whatever modifications you are doing it in cars underscore data one that will be reflected in that data frame alone. The original data frame will not get affected by your modifications. So, there are two cases you can choose any of the copies according to the requirements. Whenever you want to do any modifications and reflect back to the original data in that case we can go for shallow copy, but if you want to keep the original data untouched and whatever changes you are making that should be reflected in the copy alone then in, in that case you can use a deep copy. So, now we will see how to get attributes of data attributes in the sense getting the basic informations out of data one of it is called getting the index from the data frame. So, the syntax being data frame dot index dot index can be used whenever you have a data frame. So, to get the index index means the row labels here whenever you want to get the row labels of the data frame you can use data frame dot index here data frame being cars underscore data one and I am using dot index function that will give me the output for the row labels of the data frame. If you see the row labels is ranging from 0 to 1435 where the length is 1436. So, the indexing in python starts from 0 to n minus 1 here. So, this is how we get row labels from the data frame. Next we will see about how to get the column names of the data frame. You can get the column labels of the data frames using dot columns. So, cars underscore data one dot columns will give you all the column names of your data frame. Basically, the output is just an object which is a list of all the column names from the data frame cars underscore data one by getting the attributes of the data like the row labels and the column labels you will be able to know from which range your row labels are starting from and what are all the column names that you have in your data frame. Next we can also get the size that is we can also get the total number of elements from the data frame using the command dot size here this is just the multiplication of 1436 into 10 where 1436 rows are there and 10 columns are there. So, when you multiply that you will get the total number of elements that is what the output represents. You can also get the shape or the dimensionality of the data frame using the command dot shape. So, cars underscore data one dot shape will give you how many rows are there and how many columns are there explicitly. The first value represents rows 1436 rows are there and 10 columns are there. So, you will be able to get the total number of elements as well as how many number of rows and how many number of columns are there separately also. So, next we will see about the memory usage of each column in bytes. So, to get the memory usage of each column in bytes, so we use the command dot memory underscore usage and the dot memory underscore usage will give you the memory used by each column that is in terms of bytes. So, if you see all the variables has used the same memory, there is no precedence or there is no higher memory that is used for any particular variable, all the variable has used the same memory and the data type that you are seeing here is the data type of the output. The next how to get the number of axes or the array dimensions, 
basically to check how many number of axes are there in your data frame you can get that using dot n dim function. So, I have used cars underscore data 1 dot n dim that will give you how many number of axes are there that is basically how many number of dimensions that are available for your data frame it basically the output says as to because the cars underscore data 1 has two dimension one dimension being rows and the other dimension being columns all the rows forms one dimension on all the columns forms the other dimension and just because we have multiple variables it does not mean that we have multi dimension to your data the data frame just consists of two dimensions. So, it becomes a two dimensional data frame and if you see a two dimensional array stores the data in a format consisting of rows and columns that is why a data frames dimension is two. So, next we will see how to do indexing and selecting data the python slicing operator which is also known as the square braces and attribute or dot operator which is being represented as a period that are used for indexing and indexing basically provides quick and easy access to pandas data structures whenever you want to index or select any particular data from your data frame the quick and easy way to do that will be using the slicing operator and a dot operator. So, now we will see how to index and select the data the first thing that we are going to see is about the head function basically the head function returns the first n rows from the data frame the syntax being data frame dot head inside the function you can just give how many number of rows it should return and I have used 6 here that means that the head function will return me 7 rows if you note by default the head function returns only the first 5 rows from your data frame you can also specify your desired value inside the head function if you do not give any value to it by default it will give the first 5 rows. So, if you see it returns 6 rows with all the column values. So, this will be useful whenever you want to get the schema of your data frame just to check what are all the variables that are available in your data frame and what each variable value consists of. In that case the quick method or the quick way to do is using the head function there is also an option where you can get the last few rows from your data frame using the tail function basically the function tail returns the last n rows for the data frame that you have specified I have used cars underscore data 1 dot tail and inside the function I have used 5 even if you do not give 5 it will return the last 5 rows from your data frame this will be a quickest way to verify your data whenever you are doing sorting or appending rows. So, now we have seen how to access the first few rows and the last few rows from the data frame there is also a method to access a scalar value the fastest way is to use the at and i at methods basically the at provides label based scalar lookups whenever you want to access a scalar value you can either use at function or use i at methods. So, if you are using at function you basically need to give the labels inside the function that is what it means as label based scalar lookups I am accessing a function called dot at and inside the function the first value should be your row label and the second value should be your column label and I am accessing a scalar value which corresponds to fifth row and corresponds to the fuel type column. So, whatever I have given here is just the labels for rows and columns and the value corresponds to fifth row and the fuel type is diesel. So, this is how you access a scalar value using the at function using just the row labels and the column labels. There is also another method called i at and the i at provides integer based lookups where you have to use the row index and the column index instead of using labels you can also give row index and the column index if you are sure about the index then you can go for i at but if you are sure about just the column names then in that case you will go for at function. So, if you see here I have used dot i at function where 5 is the 6th row and 6 is the 7th column and the value corresponding to 6th row 
and seventh column would be 0. So, this is how I access a scalar value using the row index and the column index. So, now we have seen how to access a scalar value from your data frame. There is also an option where you can access a group of rows and columns by labels that can be done using the dot lock operator. So, now we will see how to use the dot lock operator to fetch few rows or columns from your data frame. So, here also you have to use the data frame name that is cars underscore data 1. So, whenever you are using the dot lock operator you should be using a slicing operator followed by the function. So, inside the function you just basically need to give two values one should represent the row labels and the other should represent the column labels. So, here I want to fetch all the row values from a column called fuel type. In that case I can use colon to represent all, but here is just the snippet of 9 rows just for explanation purpose, but in your spider you will be getting all the rows which are under the fuel type column. You can also give multiple columns for example, you can give fuel type and price in as a list basically when we say list you can just give the values inside the square brackets. In that case you will get all the row values based on multiple columns. So, this is how we access group of rows and columns using dot lock operator. So, in this lecture we have seen about the pandas library. We have also seen how to import data into spider. After importing we have also seen how to get the copy of your original data frame followed by that we have seen how to get the attributes of data like row labels and column labels from your data and after that we have seen how to do indexing in selecting data using iat, at and dot lock operators.